go live all right all right so waiting for the number please to move to three good evening good evening to you too welcome to our stream i hope you guys uh, you had a great day uh -huh. good to know that uh, you're logged in and uh, waiting so simply waiting for uh, the number to reach our 10 so that we can move into the paper so this evening we are looking at biology paper one for 2019 for gc candidates okay so far we are four okay looking for the number to increase uh, good evening let me know in the chat if uh, the audio is clear the video is okay it's not breaking so that we can get started and uh, look at the questions which we have for today okay all right we are at uh, four so far all right five okay all right so waiting for the rest to join Okay. So hope you guys had a pleasant day. Okay, good evening to you too. How is the audio today? Is it clear? Uh, good evening to you too. Good evening. Okay, the audio is clear. That's good to know. All right. So just waiting for the number to reach 10, then we can move into our paper and get started. That's good to know. Hope you guys had a pleasant day. Okay. All right, that's good to know. I'm loud and clear. Okay. All right. All right, good evening to you guys too. All right, that's good, that's good okay all clear all right excellent okay very good guys all right good to see that you're here all right so let's get into the paper we are at 10 now so we are here to look at uh, biology paper one for the year 2019 and this was written by gc candidate time okay so i hope i'm not breaking on your end so looking forward to seeing how fair in this paper so make sure when you're answering uh, type the question number and the letter of your choice of your choosing so that i can see your responses and uh, let's participate fully very good mm -hmm. all right so for those joining welcome uh, we're about to get started So in case uh, the audio is not clear, feel free to let me know. All right, so we are here to look at biology paper one. And uh, this was uh, 2019 for GC candidates altogether. So let's see which questions were given in this uh, question paper so that we can go through together today. All right, so we had question number one okay so question number one says elena was walking along a road when she saw an object under a tree eye. okay so we have an object under a tree when the elena touched the object it uh, rolled over and it divided into two so which characteristic of living things did the object show okay so we have seven characteristics of living organisms out together so is it a excretion movement nutrition or b growth reproduction sensitivity or d movement reproduction respiration or d movement reproduction and d sensitivity yes guys which one is the correct answer so the object was touched it moved and divided into two okay so 
which characteristics of living organisms do we have remember we have uh, seven characteristics so what do you think is the correct answer for question number Yes, guys. Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. The correct answer here is Z, D. Excellent job. So the object was touched. That is sensitivity. It rolled over. That is movement divided into two. That's a binary fusion, which is reproduction. Nine. So the correct answer here is Z, D. We have movement, reproduction, sensitivity. Excellent work, guys. That is the correct answer. The correct answer is a D. Okay. Moving on to question number two. Question number two says, which of the following correctly reads the path followed by a light beam from a mirror to the viewer of the specimen under a microscope? Hello guys, are we back? Oh, sorry, sorry for the break. Are we back now? Are we back? I was waiting for network. Is it okay on your side? We are saying it's good. All right, that, that's good. I need others to confirm. I know I still have uh, seven uh, in the chat so far. Are we okay? Okay, clear now. All right, very good. Thanks, guys, for being so patient. Uh, sorry for that breaking network. Uh, Airtel is not going to keep us from uh, revising. Aye. All right, so the year we are looking at is 2019 okay good to know that you are still here guys thank you B, for being so patient all right so okay all good all good i'm seeing all yeses all right that's good to hear okay so okay i didn't get your responses so which one are we seeing how is light going to move uh in the microscope so from the specimen where is it uh going in next is it a from the specimen to the objective lens to the barrel to the eyepiece or b specimen eyepiece barrel objective lens or c the specimen barrel objective lens eyepiece or d the eyepiece specimen objective lens or barrel so for this question you need to know uh, the parts of the microscope so how is the movement here how is light going to move okay Yes, guys, how is it going to move? Sorry, I missed your options. Uh, network had cut earlier. Uh -huh. So we are saying from the specimen to the objective lens to the barrel to the eyepiece. Excellent work, guys. Yes, the correct answer is Z, A. Well done. So that is how light will move. Eh? Excellent work. All right, moving on to question number three. I hope the question is clear. I know so, uh, some of you have difficulties, especially when the words are smaller to view. But this is the best I can magnify the question so far. So the diagram below shows a section through a leaf. Okay, so we have a leaf here labeled SPRQ. Uh, which structure is the organ and which one is it? the tissue? Okay, so I want to find out here which one is it? the organ and which one is it? a tissue. Okay, so yes, we have A, P, R, D, P, S, C, Q, R, D, S, C, Q. Yes, guys. Which one is the organ? And uh, which one is uh, the tissue? Mm -hmm. All right. So I apologize for question number three not being too clear. Uh -huh, but uh, I try to read through the question and here. Okay, so very good. All right, so 
back to question number one the barrel is uh, where you fit into the eyepiece the, that piece between the eyepiece and the body tube that is what is known as a, a bar okay all right so here the organ itself is uh, the leaf which is showing the p so this is showing the leaf mesophyll and the tissue we have is the spongy cell which is ara so here we have the spongy mesophyll so we have the spongy uh, s is the cuticle q is the gut cell so the correct answer here is a well done guys that is the correct answer okay Moving on to question number four now. The table below shows conditions in four test tubes containing equal amounts of starch and this salivary amylase. We have test tube one, pH two, temperature 27, test tube two, pH two, temperature 37, test tube three, pH seven, temperature 27, test tube four, pH seven, Test, uh, temperature 37 in which test tube would the starch be broken in uh, fastest okay is it a 1 b 2 c 3 d 4 where are we going to have digestion taking place eh, faster yes guys mm -hmm. okay where will the enzyme be faster very good yes guys uh, keep it up yes looking forward to your answers uh -huh. excellent work guys that is the correct answer the correct answer is d so enzyme amylase is actually works in slightly alkaline to neutral conditions and of course see uh, the higher temperature speeds up the rate of the chemical at the reaction so 37 degrees celsius is a high enough temperature for it to occur at its faster rate time so the correct answer there is a four. Well done, guys. Okay. All right. Moving on to question number five. So question five says the table below shows some of the nutrients in four meals. Okay. Uh, which meal will be the most likely uh, to stimulate peristalsis along the alimentary canal? So which one stimulates peristalsis? Eh? We have who? grams per hundred gram. So carbohydrates, fats, roughage, protein. Eh? So A, uh, carbohydrates we have 18, fats we have 12, roughage we have 8, proteins we have 25. Eh? So B, we have carbohydrates 30, then e, fats 22, roughage 2, proteins 12. Eh? Then C, we have uh, carbohydrates 30, then e, fats 4, roughage 22, and e, proteins 10. Then in D, we have 40 grams, fats 15 grams, roughage 10 grams, and D, protein 5 grams. So which one will stimulate peristalsis? Eh? So which food will stimulate peristalsis? Yes, guys, question number 5. Mm -hmm. Really enjoying the energy you are giving, guys, in the comment sections. Please keep it up. Well done, guys. Uh -huh. Very good. Let's keep those cancers coming. Uh -huh. Which one do you think will stimulate peristalsis? Okay. All right. Uh, I hope you, the settings on your phone are up to optimum so that you can see. But I'll try to work out on the others and see if we can make the questions more clear. Okay. Very good. So, roughage is the one which stimulates peristalsis eh? because it's a dietary fiber. So, the more roughage you have, the better peristalsis you are going to take place. So if you look at the options, the one with the most roughage is this C. So that's why C here is the correct answer because it has got the highest amount of roughage, which is 22 grams per 100 grams. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Question 5. Right? So eating food rich in fiber prevents constipation because peristalsis will take place. All right, moving on to question number 6. So it says, which of the following deficiency diseases results from consuming food that lacks iodine? Now together. So if you're lacking iodine in your diet, what disease will occur? Is it A, anemia, B, goiter, C, kwashoka, D, marasmus? Okay, I hope the question is clear. Okay, we are at question number six. Mm-hmm. 
so which food which deficiency disease occurs when you're lacking iodine in the diet is it a anemia b goiter c kwashoka d marasmus yes guys which one is the correct answer uh-huh excellent way guys yes the correct answer is a b you a person who get a goiter which leads to causes the thyroid gland to do what to swell why anemia is the lack of iron kwashoka is lack of proteins marasmus is lack of carbohydrate same so lack of and iodine causes a goiter great job guys i can see we are reading our notes on nutrition i very good okay question uh, seven which uh, macronutrient stimulates the uh, growth of uh, flowers uh, and fruits in plants okay so we're looking for flowers and the uh, fruit time so is it a magnesium b nitrogen c phosphorus and d potassium so which uh, macronutrient Uh -huh. Question 7. Which macronutrient, guys? Yes, guys, which macronutrient will stimulate the growth of flowers and the fruits? Is it magnesium? or is it uh, nitrogen or is it phosphorus or is it uh, potassium uh -huh. so here the correct answer guys is actually d so d is the one which we use for flowers and the fruit time phosphorus from the word grass this one you usually refer it to growth of roots nitrogen you need it for proteins uh, magnesium you need it for growth ui so the correct answer for fruiting is the potassium so when you add potassium it will give you flowers and the fruit so that's why if you are going to be growing tomatoes you want to make money when the from selling tomatoes you need to be buying fertilizer which contains what potassium so that they can make more flowers and that's when you get more fruits and then you'll be able to sell to the market time eh? okay all right moving on to question number eight i hope this guy question will be clear to you guys i know the words are a bit small the diagram shows a variegated leaf partly covered as shown okay the leaf was exposed to light for four hours and then tested for star time so here we have uh, white and uh, green and uh, we have uh, black paper and we have the hole which is number four so which regions would turn uh, blue black out together so here we are saying which uh, part would turn blue black is it uh, a uh one and two the white and the green or b one and three the white and the, the black uh black paper or c two and four the green part and the, the hole in the paper or d two and d three we have uh, the green and the black paper so which part will turn uh, blue black we we'll have uh, starchy present Yes, guys, question number eight. Which part? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Excellent job, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is C. Okay, very good. So the green part contains chlorophyll. So this one will be able to carry out photosynthesis. Then the one which has a hole in the paper, light is able to pass through. So photosynthesis will take what place I am. It won't take place see, on white because it's white, it has no chlorophyll, and also on the black paper because it does not uh, allow light to pass what uh, through. So, absence of light and absence of chlorophyll does not allow photosynthesis to take uh, place. Eh? So, question number nine we are back to the dental formula. So, the following is a dental formula of a dog we have uh, incisors 3 over 3, uh, canines 1 over 1, premolars 4 over 4, molars 2 over 3. How many incisors are in the dog's mouth? So how many incisors are in the mouth of this dog guy? How many incisors? We have A, 6, B, 8, C, 12, D, 
D60. Okay, so I think in the previous video I was explaining on the dental formula. I hope you remember what I was saying on the dental formula so that you don't miss out on this one. Yes, guys, number nine, how many incisors are present in the mouth of this dog? Mm -hmm. Number nine, yes, guys. Uh -huh. Excellent work, guys. So the correct answer here is 12. Excellent. So why 12? Because we need to add the number of incisors. So 3 plus C. So 3 plus 3 will be equals to what? 6. Eh? But we are not done with the dental formula. Because the dental formula, uh, you have to look at half of the jaw. Eh? So since you are looking at half of the jaw, to make it whole, you multiply by what? By 2. Eh? So that's why the answer here is what? 12. So don't forget when you're dealing with the dental formula to multiply by 2 if you want the total number of teeth. And if you have the total number of teeth, you want the formula, you will divide by 2. So that's the trick there. And I'm happy at least you guys, you are paying attention and you are able to score this one without any difficulty. Excellent job. That is the correct answer. I can see we've all gotten this one. Aha. Excellent work, guys. Moving on to question number 10. The diagram shows a part of the human digestive system. What digestive juice flows through part Q? So we are talking about part Q here. Okay. So A, bowel. B, gastric juice. C, intestinal juice. D, pancreatic juice. Okay. I hope the question is clear on your end. Okay. We are on question number 10. So for part uh, Q, which digestive juice will pass through this one? Okay. Yes, guys. Uh huh. Keep the uh, keep the question. The answer is coming. Yes, guys. Uh huh. Very good. Very good. Uh huh. All right. Excellent work, guys. Very good. The correct answer here is Z D. So Q is the pancreatic duct. So this one will carry pancreatic what juice. Eh? So the one which will be carrying bowel is this one, which is the bowel duct. So there are two here. We have the bowel duct and the pancreatic duct. Okay, so the pancreatic duct joins to the pancreas and this one will carry pancreatic what juice. Eh? So that's why D here is the correct answer very good guys that is the correct answer all right moving on to number 11 which of the following can be sorry which of the following can be caused by excessive drinking of alcohol now together so for people who like i know today is friday so for people who have gone for friday special what can happen due to excessive drinking of alcohol is it a emphysema b a cirrhosis C. Hepatitis D. Hepatomegaly Okay, so what will be caused by excessive drinking of alcohol? Yes, guys, 11. Mm -hmm. What can lead to excessive drinking of alcohol? Mm -hmm. Excellent job, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is B. It's a river cirrhosis altogether. So cirrhosis is the one which leads to what is caused by excessive drinking of alcohol. So emphysema deals with the breakdown of the alveoli in the lungs. Hepatitis is a liver disease caused by virus. Hepatomegaly is the swelling up of the liver. So that is the correct answer. So the correct answer there is B. Well done, guys. That is the correct answer. Moving on to question number 12. What happens to the floor of the mouth and the operculum during inspiration in the fish? Now together. So here we have the floor of the mouth, the mouth and the operculum. So A, lowered, mouth opens, operculum closes. B, mouth lowered, mouth closed, operculum closed. Or C, mouth raised, mouth closed, operculum open. Or D, Flow of the mouth raised, mouth opened, and the opacular moon closed down. So what will happen during inspiration in the fish? 
Yes, guys, is it A, B, C, or D? Question 12. Yes, guys. Uh huh, keep it coming. Uh huh. Very good, very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent work, guys. Very good. So, during inspiration, the floor of the mouth will be lowered, the mouth will open, and the operculum will close. So the correct answer is A. Great job, guys. Uh -huh. uh, moving on to question number 13. Question 13 says, four flasks are sterilized and set up as shown here. Uh, okay. So being that they were washed with it, disinfected to kill any bacteria. So which flask would contain most alcohol after several hours? So we have A, which has the east and water at 4 degrees. B, east and water at 20 degrees c we have who east and d sugar and water at 4 degrees then d we have east sugar and water at 20 degrees so which one will have more alcohol for 13 yes guys what's the correct answer mm -hmm. so which one is it A, B, C, or D? Yes, guys. We have uh, uh, east water at 4 degrees. Then we have uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, eastern water at 20 degrees, eastern sugar at 4 degrees, and eastern sugar at 20 degrees. Excellent work, guys. Yes, the correct answer is uh, D so you have more so you need sugar to be available as a source of energy because the rest for example here you only have eastern water so there's no sugar so no respiration will take what place so here anaerobic respiration will take place because sugar is available and the temperature is suitable so the correct answer is d all right moving on to question 14 children under five years old receive immunization against mesozyme what type of immunity do they develop after injection against the measles? Is it A, active uh, natural, or B, active artificial, or B, passive natural, or D, passive artificial? Okay, which type of immunity do we have after immunization? Okay, 14. Is it active A, active natural, or active artificial, or C, passive natural, or passive artificial? Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. Uh -huh. So, question number 14, very good. Yes, the correct answer here is B. It's is active, it is active artificial. Uh -huh. So here it's active because uh, the child will be injected with uh, a weak pathogen. They are not given antibodies. So if they were given antibodies, that's when it was going to be passive. But uh, in a measles injection, there's actually a weak uh, measles virus. So that is the one given. Then the person now learns how to fight against the weak one. So that when the strong one comes, their body has already learned how to fight against the what? The infection. So that is how immunization works. Very good, guys. The correct answer there is A, B. Okay. Moving on to question number 15. How is the rate of transpiration affected by decreasing temperature and the light intensity? So how will be the effect of transpiration when we reduce temperature and we reduce the light? So A, slower, slower. B, slower, faster. C, faster, slower. D, faster and faster so we are saying a reducing temperature will slower the rate and decreasing temperature light will also lower it b to become slower and faster c faster and slower and d it will be faster faster on both occasions okay 15 what's the correct answer yes guys great job guys yes the correct answer here is a so when light temperature is reduced 
the rate of transpiration will reduce and also when the rate uh, intensity is reduced transpiration becomes this slower because the stomata will close here the molecules move will slowly so evaporation will be slow so that's why a here is the correct answer so the other questions we are looking at we are looking at uh, what is causing transpiration to occur faster this time the question has been flipped and asking what happens when we reduce the factors light intensity and the temperature okay next question we have is question number 16 which says the diagram below shows you some cells from the mammalian blood okay these are from blood we have cell a b c and d so which of the above cells breaks down in pathogens together so which one breaks down in pathogens is it a b c or d so a we have a phagocyte b we have a lymphocyte c we have a red blood cell and d we have platelets so which one is in charge of breaking down the pathogens yes guys uh-huh excellent way guys the correct answer here is a so phagocytes so how do we tell it's a phagocyte it has got a lobed nucleus so the lobed nucleus that is a phagocyte these are the ones which are able to engulf what bacteria so they will engulf bacteria and then break it what down nine so this one has a large nucleus so this is a lymphocyte their job is simply to produce antibodies so that is the correct answer ai okay moving on to question uh, 17 i hope this will be clear on your end that side the diagram below shows a longitudinal section of the heart we have parts labeled one two three and four so these are valves so which of the following valves labeled one two three and four are closed and which ones are open during a atricular system so during atricular system which valves are open and which ones are closed so atricular system this is the contraction of the uh atriums together so then atrium squeeze which valves will open and which one will close so we have valve one and valve two sorry valve one and valve three and four so a closed closed b closed open c open closed d open closed okay yes guys which ones will be open and which one will be closed okay what's the correct answer for question 17 okay my apologies for those who can't see sorry the this is how far i could magnify the question okay yes guys so we are okay very good excellent liking your options there so here the correct answer here is z uh, where are we okay yeah I, I was looking for my mouse so during auricular system the auricles are going to squeeze out together so once there's pressure here it will actually force blood to move down into the ventricles so three and four are going to what open eye so three and four will open while one and two do what will close so three four open one and two closed so the correct answer here is what b out together so when blood goes in these two are going to be closed because these are the ones which are opening eye are we together so that is the correct answer uh sorry for uh, you guys who couldn't see this one clearly i hope uh, we managed to turn our phones over in the uh, landscape okay so that is the correct answer so three four will open during auricular system wow one and two do what will close so the correct answer is a b okay all right moving on to question 18 the diagram below shows the human excretory system we have the part labeled x so what is the function of the part labeled x is it a to excrete urea b to produce urea c to produce urine d to store urine yes guys uh-huh 18 
yes guys what's the correct answer for 18 we have uh, part x what's the function of the part labeled x is it a to excrete urea or b to produce urea or c to produce urine or d to store urine okay are we able to get me are we still clear Yes, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we still there? Okay. All right. Excellent job, guys. The correct answer is it D. So X is the bladder, urinary bladder. And the function of the urinary bladder is to store our T, urine produced by the kidney. So the correct answer is D. Well done, guys. Uh -huh, that was excellent response. All right. So next question we have is question 19. Okay, where is my marker? Okay, 19. So how does the skin maintain the body temperature at the 7 degrees Celsius when a person moves from a hot to a cold environment? Okay. So I think yesterday the question we are looking at was for an athlete who was running, if you remember. Uh, so this time the question is asking us, see, how is the body temperature maintained when someone moves from hot to cold? So we have A, arterioles in the skin contract, B, arterioles in the skin dilate, C, hairs on the skin lie flat, D, the skin produces sweat. So, what is it, the correct answer? Okay, so is it uh, arterios contracting, co uh, sorry, constricting, or B, arterios dilating, or hairs on the skin lying flat, or C, or D, the skin is producing sweat? That's the correct answer for 19. Uh -huh. Excellent work, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is the AI. So, when you're in a cold environment, you are going to undergo vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction is the constriction of the blood the vessels. So don't be afraid of this word atrios. So atrios are just simply uh, branches of the arteries. So we are going to have uh, constriction taking what? Place sign. Alright. Very good. So next we move on to question number 20. So question 20 is here. The diagram shows the reflex arc. We have parts uh, P, uh, Q, R, and the S sign. So which of the following, so which one of the following is the correct sequence in the flow of an electric impulse? Okay. So A, is it from P to Q to R to S? Or B, P to R to S to Q? Or C, Q R S P or D Q S P R. So apologies if the question is not clear on your end. Uh, I promise in the next video I think we'll work on this one uh, so that at least we don't have anyone not uh, seeing the questions clearly so that we are able to revise and go through this uh, more effectively. Okay. Yes, guys, what's the correct answer for question 20? Yes, guys, what's the correct answer for 20? What is the correct sequence? Okay, very good, guys. So what will happen is that the candle here will be the stimuli. So the sensory neuron will, the, so the receptor will pick up will, the signal. So we start with the receptor, which will be our first step. Then the receptor will pass the nerve impulse to the sensory neuron, which will be our next step. Then sensory will pass the information to re relay, which will be our third then relay will pass information to the motor, which then stimulates the muscle, which will be our fourth step. So our sequence is ZPRSQ. So the correct answer here is what? B. Excellent work, guys. That is the correct sequence of how an impulse moves in a reflex arc. Well done, guys. Okay, moving on to question number 21. The following are some of the drugs abused. 
Okay, let me say the following are some of the drugs used or abused by human beings. We have alcohol, heroin, and penicillin. Which of these drugs are, sorry, which of these drugs may be addictive, leading to possible withdrawals and the, uh, when their use is discontinued? So we have alcohol, heroin. Okay, so we have A, one only, B, uh, one and two only. C two and three, D one and D one two three. We have alcohol, heroin, and penicillin. So when someone stops taking these drugs, where does someone suffer from withdrawal symptoms? Uh -huh. So this is where we have uh, the name even emphasizes a lot to say, oh, it's a good So when he actually when they get uh, withdraw symptoms so when someone gets withdraw symptoms they even get sick that day you might even think someone is sick of malaria even vomiting can take place uh -huh. so which is the withdrawal where do we have withdraw symptoms very good so the one which will be SKB able to show withdraw symptoms is C, heroin and the alcohol so the correct answer here is Z, B well done guys so especially those who are taking heroin it's actually a very very addictive drug Together. So alcohol also in the long run can become addictive. That's why I find that some people if they don't take alcohol, they even start uh, shaking because of lack of uh, alcohol. All those are withdrawal uh, symptoms. Right? So the correct answer to 21 is uh, B. Okay. Alright, next question we have is question 22. Alright. So question 22, I think uh, I'm abstracting part of the question. Let me remove this part. Okay. So the diagram below shows a section through a human eye. So we have parts labeled A, B, C, and D. Which structure contains the muscles which contract to produce a focused image on the retina? Come together. So which structure contains the muscles which contract to produce a focused image on the retina? Yes, guys. Which part? Is it A? B, C, O, D. 22. Which one is the correct answer for 22? Very good, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is Z, B. We have the ciliary what? Muscle. So the ciliary muscle is the muscle which is going to contract to cause the accommodation, which is focusing of the retina. So A are the suspensory ligaments. Uh, D is the iris. This one only contracts and relaxes to control the pupil reflex sign. And C is the aqueous humor. So the correct answer here is it B. It's the ciliary muscle. Okay. So next we have is question number 23 so how are bones and the cartilage similar so how are bones and cartilage similar a they are both rigid b they both act as shock absorbers c they both contain living cells d they both produce red blood cells so how are bones and cartilage similar uh, is it because they are both rigid or they both uh, act as uh, shock absorbers or is it uh, because they both contain living cells or D, they both produce red blood D cells? Yes, guys, what's the correct answer? Mm -hmm. Excellent job, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is this. C, they both contain living T cells. Eh? So here, that's why bones and cartilage are similar because even though they appear, uh, so we find that the cartilage is actually softer, so they are not rigid, and the, the one which acts as a so shock absorber is actually cartilage, and the one which produces red blood cells are bones. So they actually both contain living cells. That is the correct answer. Okay. All right. So here we are going to have a serious uh, challenge. Okay, I can see the question is not very clear. So the diagram below shows uh, three shoots exposed to light. 
containing uh, coming from one side line so we have o, p uh, q and r so how will these plants look after 48 hours so this one it has bended the, this direction okay this one is bending this direction okay all right so this one you find that for it uh, it still re remains the same so there's like a small piece here okay this one is still straight okay for this one okay it has bended going the other direction here it has also bent this one has also bent okay so this one is still straight this one is still straight as well okay this one is uh, bending this way okay and this one is bending this way and this one is still straight okay so what would be the response of the plants after 48 hours i apologize the question is not uh, clear i think next time we will make uh, yeah i know you have a challenge you can't see i i really understand sorry sorry about that my apologies for not uh, making the questions very clear i thought they were clear but now after seeing them all now this evening that's when i've noticed that it's not even much clear okay so which one will be the correct response is it a b c or d yes guys what is the correct answer so i've tried to draw them i hope you, you can make something out of this question now uh, 24 how will the response be Is it going to go uh, bend towards the light or away from more light? Okay. So here, the correct answer is actually B. Now together. So why B? Because uh, here, this carpet has been covered up altogether. So it's not able to receive any light. So this one will keep on growing straight but this one will be exposed to light so it will actually bend to the other what side eye so then uh, for this one it will still remain straight uh, bend a bit altogether because this one has been exposed to what light but for here you're not going to have any growth taking what place so that is the correct answer for question number 20 25 uh, so that's why because this one has been covered a bit but I will try to come back to this question again. I think maybe tomorrow, I'll, on Monday, I will put it in as the last uh, question so that we can see it properly uh, as we revise our paper for tomorrow. Right? Okay, so I will still come back to this question on Monday. I apologize for this question not being clear. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so but the correct answer there is a B. Okay. Uh, let me just see if i'm obstructing the question okay so i'll remove this part all right so the diagram below shows parts of the sh shoot tip we have a b c and d which parts labeled a b c or d is the region of cell elongation so we want a region where cell elongation is taking place is it a b c or d yes guys okay which one is the region of cell elongation this question is looking at the uh, growth in plants the region is of growth question 25 which parts is the region of cell elongation we're looking for the region of cell elongation where do the cells become longer Yes, guys, where do the cells become longer? Mm -hmm. Is it A, B, C, or D? Okay. Very good, guys. Uh -huh. Excellent work. The correct answer here is e, B, I. This is where the cell elongation will take what place. Immediately, you start seeing the xylem or the vascular bundles. The vascular bundles are starting from here. So mean that all this C and D are all differentiation. Okay. 
so these are all differentiation nine so a this is where cell division is taking what place zone of cell yt division nine okay then b this is where elongation will take what place so the correct answer there was a b well done guys that is the correct answer uh-huh really look here that's good i can see we are really paying attention to these uh, questions all right so the question 26 the diagram the following diagram shows the germination of broad beans so we have broad beans all together we have wool, mustard seed and the sunflower seed broad bean mustard seed sunflower seed so what type of germination is shown by these seedlings okay so we have broad beans mustard seed sunflower so a we have hypogel epigel epigel b hypogel hypogel epigel c epigel epigel hypogel d epigel hypogel epigel i think we might have covered this question again if i'm not mis uh, mistaken let me know or if you still remember a similar question like this one in uh, our previous papers so what type of germination are we seeing here mm -hmm. which one is the correct type of uh, germination okay is it a Ep hypogel epigel epigel or b hypogel epigel sorry hypogel hypogel epigel then we have epigel epigel and hypogel and d epigel hypogel and d epigel germination yes guys which type of germination are we seeing mm -hmm. for question 26 okay okay so ns you need to be clear which question you are, which question number you are not clear on i'm not sure whether you are on 25 or 26 so without the question number i can't be able to help okay so when you come to germination this layer here we are seeing is the soil or the ground so if the cotyledon or the seed is below the ground that is the uh, hypogel now together if it uh, cotyledon shoots above the ground that is the uh, epigel wine. Okay, so sunflower is going to be tricky because you might see the cotyledon is appearing down, but this is also epigel. So this would be epigel germination because it will come out later on. So this one is also epigel. This one remains in the soil. So this is the hypo, hypogel. So our correct answer here is the A. So broad beans, we have wool, hypogel mustard seeds epigel and sunflower seed it's epigel germination all right guys that was a good one and they can see we are able to actually see that one as well okay so that is what we refer to as the types of germination so i explained this one nicely the time i was teaching on him the growth and development so i hope you had enjoyed the lecture later on so that is where we covered this part under uh, uh, happy gel and the hypogel so when you visit the notes you'll be able to see the differences between the types of wood germination epigel and the hypogel so you look at the cotyledon so if it's below the ground it is a high point above the ground this one is still going to push up is epigel so that's why the correct answer is a all right Moving on to question 27, which of the following is a disadvantage of vegetative propagation? Okay, we're talking about vegetative propagation. So A, plants are usually overcrowded. B, plants are widely spread. C, plant population grows slowly. D, varieties of useful plants are kept unchanged. So which one is the, a disadvantage of vegetative propagation? okay 25 was not clear okay we'll have a look at it later on all right so we are at the question number 27 now so which is a disadvantage of vegetative propagation is it uh, a plants are usually overcrowded b plants are widely dispersed c plant population grows slowly d varieties of useful plants c are kept unchanged mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yes, guys, what's the correct answer? Very good. The correct answer here is A. Nice job, guys. Plants will usually be overcrowded. So, for example, if you've grown bananas before, you see that the suckers will be covered very close to the plant. Eh? Or maybe if you are growing sugar canes, you see that the sugar cane will be tightly wati packed together because the plants become over wati crowded. So that is the disadvantage of vegetative propagation. So if they are overcrowded, they will be competing for space, competing also for nutrients with their parents. So that becomes a problem for the plants. Okay. So A is the correct answer. All right. Moving on to question number 28. So the following shows a merry good fruit a magnified D three times. So times three. Right? So the above fruit is dispersed by which type of seed vessels do we have here? Is it A, animals, B, self, C, water, D, wind? So the marigold seed, how is it going to be dispersed? Okay. Is it by animals or by self or by water or by wind? Which type of seed dispersal are we going to have for question? 28 mm -hmm. yes guys which type of dispersal 28 uh-huh 28 which one is the correct one aha uh -huh. excellent guys because here we can see that the seed has a hook sign so we see that it contains hooks so since it has hooks this one will be dispersed by what animals it will be sticking to the fair of the animal just like ibidens pirosa the ones uh, which is scientifically known as blackjack i don't know what uh, others call it mm -hmm. i know as we used to call it capocola those are black ones which stick to your clothes they normally stick to you so i don't know how you call them in other languages let me know in the comment uh, section the one which uh, stick to your clothes okay so the blackjack or the scientifically known as B Denzi pillows. Okay. So twenty eight, the correct answer is AI. Okay. Alright. Twenty nine. The diagram shows the male reproduct uh, sorry, the diagram shows the male reproductive and the urinary system. Okay. I think this was almost the similar question to yesterday's. Which structure produces the fluid part of semen? Okay, so we have uh, A, B, C, and D, D. Okay, so which structure produces fluid part of uh, semen? Okay. Yes, guys, what's the correct uh, answer here? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Yes, Nakasokopio. Yeah, I remember that one. Yes, in Bemba, in Nakasokopio. Excellent. Yes, that's Biden Spilosa. Well done, guys. Uh -huh. Oh, I forgot that one. Yes, Nakasokopio. Okay. All right. So here, the part which will be producing semen, the fluid part of semen, is actually the prostate gland. So the correct answer here is C. So A is the yeah, ureter, bringing urine from the kidneys. B is the urinary bladder. D is the testes. The testes produce sperm, the, uh, the cells which are part of semen. So the correct answer here was this C. Well done, guys. Okay. All right. Next question is Z30. Uh, 30 says a natural method of birth control assumes that sperm Z live for three days after sexual intercourse. Okay. So, ovulation occurs uh, between day Z, 13 and 15 of the menstrual cycle and it releases an over. So, an released over lives for 36 days. On which day of the cycle would the sexual intercourse not result in a pregnancy? So, we are back to the uh, rhythm method again. And remember last time we talked about this one yesterday to say this cycle is very unreliable. So again, here we're trying to find out for those who use this method when uh, sexual intercourse will not result in what? Pregnancy. Okay. So when will sexual intercourse not lead to pregnancy? So remember the cycle runs from day one 
uh, day seven this is when menstruation will stop then we have ovulation at day 14 then day 28 the last day of the cycle so when will sexual intercourse not result in pregnancy is it uh, day 7 day 10 day 12 or day 16 yes guys which one do you think is the correct answer okay very good yes guys uh-huh excellent work the best day will be day what is seven so any day near the ovulation stage sexual intercourse mm -hmm. should not take what place sign eh? because here there's a chance that if pregnancy will take what place so the first safest bet we have is day what is seven that is when eh, pregnancy might not eh, result time eh? so this method not very reliable out together and it requires a lot of doing a lot of mathematics okay all right next question we have is question 31 so we are in our last uh, 10 questions now let's hope we'll get all of these now correct guys okay so i hope the question is clear on your end so it says the diagram shows a fetus in the uterus we have uh, parts r q p and s which structures remove excretory products from the fetus so which parts will be removing waste from the fetus is it uh, a p and q b q and r c r s d s and p so we have the r which is the placenta mm -hmm. placenta we have q which is the umbilical cord okay and we have P, which is the amniotic sac. Okay. And we have w, S, which is the cervix. Okay. So which parts are removing the waste from the fetus? Yes, guys. What's the correct answer? Mm -hmm. Which ones are removing waste? very good guys uh-huh the correct answer here is b it will be the placenta and the umbilical cord so the umbilical cord will be the one transporting waste from the fetus to the placenta where exchange will take what place i then bring in fresh oxygen and food to the developing fetus so that is the correct answer the correct answer is r q r okay moving on to question 32 what is the advantage of male circumcision? Okay, so A, it prevents the spread of HIV and other STIs. B, it helps the man to enjoy sex more. C, it prevents the spread of cervical cancer. D, it helps females to enjoy, to enjoy sex more. Okay, so what is the advantage of male circumcision? Uh -huh. 32 yes guys what do you think is the advantage of male circumcision is it a it prevents the spread of hiv and other stis or b it helps see the man to enjoy sex more or c it prevents the spread of cervical cancer or d it helps the female enjoy sex more okay Yes, guys, what is the advantage? Uh -huh. Very good, guys. Yes, here, the correct answer here is C. It actually helps in preventing the spread of cervical artery cancer altogether. So for A, it's actually very, very tricky because there's still a chance of you getting HIV and AIDS even if you are circumcised as a male or if you're a female, you end up getting what, uh, sick of HIV and AIDS and other STIs. So the best method which circumcision helps is in cervical cancer. All right. I'm very happy at least no one went for options B and D. Uh -huh. So the correct answer here is this CI. Uh, very good guys so that is the correct answer so prevention of cervical what cancer very good 
All right, we move on to question 33. The following are examples of characteristics in humans. We have eye color, weight, body mass, sex. Which of the following characteristics are examples of continuous variation? All right, we are back to variation again. So A, we have o, eye color and the height. B, we have o, eye color and the body mass. C, we have o, height and the body mass. Then D, we have o, body mass and the sex. So which ones are continuous variation? Yes, guys. So continuous variation, these are variations which have no clear cut distinctions. Eh? Oh, sorry. Continuous variations are variations which have intermediate uh, with intermediates. Okay. The discontinuous are the ones which have clear cut groups. Yes, guys. What is the correct answer? Uh huh. Continuous variation, which will give a nice curve. Out here, we have oh, that nice distribution curve. Excellent work, guys. The correct answer here is the CI. So it is the height and the body mass. So if you do a graph of oh, height, it will appear something like this. Eh? So this is continuous eh, variation. You can't group people totally into oh, short and tall people. Eh? There are people who are in between. So even when you group oh, short people within that group of short people, you are going to have oh, tall people in there. Who are taller than the others even when you group two people you are going to find some will be taller than the others so you always have a no more distribution from the uh, shortest to the tallest there are going to be a number of people individuals in between uh, this uh, grouping so that is what is known as a continuous variation same with body weight mass eh? all right the next question we have is question 34 so question 34 says a woman has blood group o her child has a blood group O. What is the, the likelihood? Sorry, what is the, the likely blood group genotype of the father? Okay, so here the mother is O. Remember, O is recessive, so this one will have O O, and uh, the child also has O O. Right? So we have O, the mother, and the father. So what would be the chance of O? The father's genotype. So, and the genotype of the blood group of who? the father. Okay. Yes, guys. What is the correct answer here? Question thirty-four. Okay. Very good, guys. So, to find this one, you can simply say we have the mother. Okay, and uh, crossed with the, the father. Okay, so we know that the mother is O O, and the child is also O O I. So mean that this child had to receive an O from the mother and also an O from the father. So mean that the father is supposed to also have who? O in his genotype. I. So when you look at the options, the one with O in the genotype is Z D. So mean that the father is Z A O. So otherwise, without having an O, the child can't be born O O. So that's why D is the correct word to answer. So you work backwards. So remember that uh, genotypes, one comes from the mother, the other one comes from the what? The father. I mean, one comes from the mother, the other one comes from the father. So the correct answer for question 34 is D. Moving on to question number 35, it says, which of the following is the smallest and the mostly used taxa in classification of living organisms? So we are looking at the smallest and mostly used taxa in the classification of living things. Is it A, class, B, kingdom, C, phylum, and D, species? Yes, guys, what's the answer for question 35? So we are looking at the smallest and the mostly used uh, level of tax taxonomy. Okay, just have some wood. Is it the class, the kingdom, phylum, or species? Yes, guys. Uh huh. Very good. Uh huh. Well done, guys. Yes, the correct answer here is e, D. So the smallest or last level of classification is e, the species. Right? So the highest we have is the kingdom, 
the name followed by the phylum and from phylum we have the class the name the last one is species so in between we still have who phylum we have who family as well in between eh? so that is the how we move in classification so the smallest and mostly used taxa is actually the species eh? okay so that is the correct answer so moving on to question number 36 i uh, apologize this one is not going to be very clear on your end it says in an experiment was carried out to investigate the drainage of wool soil samples from four different fields eh? so equal amounts of wool soil and water were used the diagram shows the results eh? so we have wool, one two three and four eh? so which soil type is it clay is it one two three or four so a one b two c three and d d four so which soil is it clay okay yes guys so here we're talking about drainage of the soil eh? so how is the drainage of uh, clay soil does it retain water or is does it allow water to pass it through yes guys uh -huh. 36 what's the correct answer excellent job guys the correct answer here is a three c because the clay soil has got high water retention so mean that it does not allow water to pass what through why so that's why here we have very little water which is uh, collected in this soil type root 3 because the soil is keeping all the water which was added to it it's not allowing the water to pass it through but if you look at the question uh, number two here most of the water passed through so this was mostly likely sand soil right? but number three is our clay so the correct answer there is c all done guys that's the correct answer all right moving on to question number 37 the diagram shows what happens to energy that enters the atmosphere from the sun we have two percent absorbed by plants 16 percent is reflected away the two percent warms the ground 50 percent see evaporates water so how much of the sun's energy is not used for photosynthesis now together a uh, less than two percent b about 32 percent c about t 66 percent d more than 98 percent so how much of the sun's energy are we not using for photosynthesis so which one are we not using for photosynthesis Yes, guys, what is the correct answer here for question 37? How much of the sun's energy is not used for photosynthesis? Mm -hmm. How much are we not using? okay so here for 37 remember we are using two to absorb who is absorbed by plants so this one will actually be absorbed by plants right? so two percent will be absorbed by plants so this one will be used for photosynthesis 16.6 is reflected away so we don't use this one 32 warms up the ground and the 50 percent evaporates water water so the one which we are actually going to find that it's not being used by plants will actually be more than 92 percent so here the correct answer is z d so we actually use very little energy from the sun okay all together so that is the correct answer so we use z more than 90 percent okay all right okay so that is more than 98 percent okay so next question we have is question 38 plants and animals living in a particular area at a particular time are collectively called 
so plants and animals so we have plants and animals living in a particular area at a particular time are collectively called a community b habitat c population d species yes guys what do we call plants animals living together Is it A, a community, B, habitat, C, population, D, species? Excellent. Why, guys? Yes, the correct answer here is A. It's a community. So community will be a group of populations living in a given area. So when you talk about plants, you talk about animals. That now make up a what? A community. Now together, so that's why it's important when civic uh, leaders say no, we are calling a community meeting. It means that you've actually invited the, all the grasses, all the rats, all the cockroaches in the community to come now for that meeting. Now together, so when you talk about the community in biology, you have even invited the plants. So those are all organisms in a particular what area. So that is what we refer to as a community. Okay. Next question we have is question 39, which says, which of the following is undertaken to minimize the population of air from water vehicles the exhaust fumes? So from car exhaust, how do we minimize the pollution? Is it A, paying carbon tax? For those who are paying, buying a road tax, if you have not yet, you will start paying this very soon. B, stop using vehicles. C, using air filters d using catalytic converters so which measure is there to reduce the pollution from car vehicles okay so we want to minimize the pollution okay is it a paying carbon tax b stop using vehicles c using air filters d using catalytic water converters Yes, guys, what is the correct answer? Okay. Very good. The correct answer here is Z, D. All together. But the best answer would have been B. If once we stop using vehicles, yes, we'll stop uh, polluting. But unfortunately, we can't live without vehicles because they've become an integral part of uh, businesses to moving goods out together. So if we don't use vehicles, we go back to bicycles. It will be difficult to export our copper even if we still use trains but uh, we want to minimize so the trick here was for minimizing right? so to minimize you have to make sure that cars have got catalytic water converters so i know some criminals uh, have started stealing catalytic converters because they contain precious metals in there but that is the way in which we can minimize the pollution from uh, motor vehicle exhaust right? by using catalytic what converters okay all right, the last question now. Uh -huh. I hope we now answer this one all together, guys. So, which one, which one of the following is not an economic reason for maintaining biodiversity? All together: A, charcoal production; B, source of food; C, source of medicine; D, tourism attraction. So, why should we keep trees? or animals is it for charcoal production is it for source of food source of medicine or d tourism attraction yes guys uh -huh. 40 let's hit those uh -huh. which one question 40 40 yes guys which one is not an economic reason for maintaining biodiversity yes guys which one is it is it charcoal production, source of food, source of medicine, or tourism attraction? Uh, yes, guys, what's the correct answer? Okay. Very good, very good. Yes, excellent work. The correct answer here is A for charcoal tea production. 
very good guys so this is the correct answer so we have uh, answered now our entire biology paper one for the year 2029 so 20 uh, 2019 sorry yeah why am i saying 2029 <laughs> so it's uh, 2019 for gcurt candidates eh? so this is the paper which uh, we had uh, for our viewing out together so hopefully you enjoyed uh, this session out together glad to have been with you guys for this uh, long uh, thank you so much for being here all the way up to the end eh? so we really had to actually go through nicely for us to actually be able to answer through all these uh, questions right so hopefully uh wishing you guys a, a good weekend and i know some of you are already rushing to go and watch uh, soccer i hope we'll be able to actually see who we're able to win the match i hope zambia will actually win uh -huh. so we are praying that they do through okay so uh just to go back to question 21 before i call it a night uh question 21 i uh, was okay uh so before i end let me just go back to question 20 was it 25 yeah someone is asking about 25 okay all right so let's see okay so question 25 i said uh, when you come to question 25 we're talking about the region of cell elongation i eh? So cell elongation is where the cells become longer. So B, this is where the cells here will divide. And once the cells divide, they will grow longer in this region. This is the one which we say cell elongation. But once you see the xylem vessels, because here, this is where the xylem, the phloem, vascular bundles are starting. Mean that the cells become different starting from this point. So that's why here, this is the part for cell elongation. Right? So C and D. Uh, or cell differentiation eh? so go back to your notes under growth and development you'll be able to understand this point more easily and why we've taken d as a correct answer so c was a distractor to distract you away from your answer to see if you actually know which region of elongation is taking what place eh? so that is what i had just for clarity on question number 25 i hope that makes things a bit clear all right so uh this point in time i would say thank you guys really enjoyed your company always uh, looking forward to seeing you guys again on stream uh make sure you uh, like the video before you go uh, that would really help me out uh, together that actually helps support the channel otherwise uh, thank you thank you so much so enjoy the weekend guys and uh, stay blessed i'll see you on monday in the next one so make sure to access more videos. Make sure you are able to join the WhatsApp group. That is only 100 kwacha per month. Okay. So thank you guys once again.